Hey, I'm Alec, and on this episode of 3D Printer Anatomy, I'm gonna talk about screens. While most 3D printers today come with a control interface or screen of some sort, it wasn't long ago that you were limited to only using a USB cord from your computer to your printer to actually control it. Now, there's still nothing wrong with doing that today, because now we have things like power recovery. So if you have a power outage or a Windows update, you don't lose your print. But back then, there were issues with that. But today, there's a lot of different screens out there from LCDs to OLED to touch screens, and they all have some similarities, some are derivatives of others. So I'm gonna dive into some of the more specific and original ones, and then some of the more broader subjects like touch screens. Now, if you have a screen, what might be displayed on it? For most firmware, it's things like the current temperature of the bed or the nozzles. It'll display your X, Y, and Z coordinates, how much time has elapsed during your print. Maybe there'll be a progress bar. Usually there is a graphic showing the fan speed or just a percentage of how much power is going into the fan. And then there's the speed multiplier. So you can change, well, my print's going too fast, it's lowered, or it's going too slow, let's speed it up. Other than that, it's very dependent on what your firmware says, because some firmware allows you to level the bed manually, except like it's an automatic bed sensor, so you can go in there and make a mesh bed without having any sort of sensor dictating it, or you can do things like Z-stepping through the LCD, but that's all very dependent on what the actual firmware will allow you to do. For actual screens, there's the RepRat Discount Smart Controller, and this is a very basic controller that's seen on things like the Rostock Max V3, and there's nothing wrong with it. It works very well and it gives you all the functionality that you really need that can be found within the firmware. You can access all that through that screen. It has a knob that you use to navigate. So if you rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on what the firmware actually says, because that's what dictates that. Clockwise or counterclockwise will move it down or up. If you click in on the knob, that's select. And then there's a reset button, which is normally just used if something is going horribly wrong in the print and you need to kill it now without reaching for the power switch, just press the button on the LCD. And then within there, you can change all the other aforementioned settings. Now, of course, because it is open source, there are many derivatives where they look very similar to this screen, or they may even be the same screen, just a different name and manufacturer. And then there's the RepRap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller. The difference between this one and the one before is that this one allows for the display of different graphics. So you can have like a bed that's heating up with little heat lines coming out of it or a nozzle that has heat lines coming out of it to show that that's hot or a fan that has a little fan rotating just to show that there's actual movement on the fan. And these are all little things that you won't see on the previous one because it just doesn't have the room for it. So this screen is just bigger, so it can show all these different things and even means that once you dial in through the options, you have more things displayed at once. And there's also derivatives of this, just like the previous one, so you will find things under different names but have the same sort of functionality. If you're trying to find a printer that actually has a screen, you can look at the Lulzbot Taz 6 or the Lulzbot Mini 2. Then there's also the Vicky 2 LCD, which has the unique feature of a glowing LED ring around the knob that shows what temperature the nozzle is at. So if it's heating up, it'll go from blue to red to show that it is now hot, do not touch. And as it's cooling down, it'll go from red to blue to show that it's cool now, you don't have to worry about burning yourself if you bump the nozzle. A minor difference between this one and the previous two is that this one is white text on a black background versus white text on a blue background of the previous two. Nothing really significant about that, just a slightly different feature. A thing to mention about the previous three displays is that they all use some form of an SD card reader in them. So you can print untethered, which just means that if you slice something, you export it to G-code and put that G-code on the SD card, then you can load that into the printer and not have any sort of interface between. So if your computer gets an update or there's some sort of poor connection between the USB connectors, that won't matter, you have an SD card that has the file safe on there. Which also means that you can, you are free to use your computer without worrying about there being any speed bumps. So if you're trying to 3D model that may cause some sort of hiccup in the data that it sends over the USB, whereas with an SD card reader, you don't have to worry about that. Now from here, there are touch screens and there is a huge variety in what actually makes up the touch screen, what are the different features shown in the touch screen and different things like that. Everybody does it a little bit differently, but they all have the same sort of functionality of being able to move the extruder, 
change filament or have different leveling procedures shown on screen. Some even show you graphic models of what your print looks like. So you can see, oh, this is the model. Maybe you have all your file names after letters instead of what the part is. You at least have a graphical representation of what the part is for that G code. In the case of the S5, you can see the model, you can change the filament. There's even pictures showing you how to change the filament and little macros like that. Other printers like the CraftBot Plus have a touch screen that allows you to move all the axes, walkthroughs for the different leveling procedures and things like that. You have the Sigma or the Sigmax, which is another different touch screen or the Robo R2 and C2, which is even different from all the rest. So all these touch screens, while functionally the same, have different sort of actual hardware that makes them work. So they all have different levels of capabilities. On top of that, having a touch screen may be a good idea for a classroom or professional setting just because most people are used to using a touchscreen on their phone, whereas the old uh, knob and dial system may be a little foreign for some people. And that about sums up the different types of screens for 3D printers. And while they aren't essential for your 3D printer, it certainly makes it easier if you're trying to run a print farm with a lot of different printers. You just have one SD card or USB drive that's dedicated to that machine, which also means you free up your computer to keep modeling things while the printers are running. Now, I like to have a Viki 2 LCD on my 3D printers, but I'd love to hear what kind of screens you guys like on your printers. I'm Alex from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.